Hi everyone, it's Giga Beef here, and with 12.12 nearly upon us, we're going to talk about how to prepare for this wipe so you're ready to start with a bang when the patch finally drops. Alright, so we pretty much know that the 12.12 wipe is coming now, as BSG posted you already know when the 12.12 release is going to be, and then shortly afterwards have started what is very likely to be pre-wipe events, with bosses rotating between different maps, all the bosses ending up on interchange, and I'm sure there's going to be some more events, I'm recording this on Wednesday, so there may well be some more stuff that happens between now and Saturday when this video is actually going to go out. As of the time of me recording this, we don't know the exact date, but the community consensus is at the moment the 12th of December, but we will have to wait and see precisely when it comes through. It's never certain exactly how BSG decides to do things, and there's usually a surprise, but you can expect to have your entire stash and skills reset back to the default that depends on your game edition, and starting again on all quest progression. The only thing that sometimes gets saved is identified items and weapon presets, but my guess is that these will be deleted as well this time like the last one. To prepare, we need to touch a little bit on some new features, and while I'm not going to do a rundown of everything being added in 12.12, as you can go and watch a million other people's videos on this, some elements are important to bear in mind. First and foremost, the new map being released is the first stage of Lighthouse, which as you can imagine will be extremely popular at the beginning for veteran players. It's going to be super fun to check out the new map, but for newer players either coming to the game seriously for the first time in 12.12, or those moving into their second or maybe even third wipes, if you want to maximise progression, I'd leave Lighthouse on the back burner just for a little bit and focus on your tasks in the regular maps to begin with. If you do want to go and mess around there, then by all means be my guest, but if it's anything like the reserve release two years ago, there won't be many quests for it yet, and the quickest path to progression in 12.12 will still likely be doing the regular quests on customs primarily, but also the other existing maps. If you're new-ish, you probably are still learning these other maps anyway, so there's no mad rush to compete with the veterans and content creators in the first week or two who'll be infesting the lighthouse location for sure. Next up on VoIP, there's not much prep to do for this so to speak, but just remember that it will be turned off by default. If you want to try it out, and I suggest that everybody does at least for a week or two so that the initial hype and the memeing gets out of the way a bit, you'll have to turn it on in the menu specifically. This might allow you to take some early tasks with like-minded people who are looking to progress and avoid confrontations in the first few days, or it might just get you killed through double crossing. Only time will tell. Last time I made some predictions about making money in the early wipe and the flea market for our current patch cycle based off prior experience, however things turned out a little differently to expectation. With the arrival of a level 20 flea from the word go, many early game items were actually worth very little when it came to accessing the flea market for the first time. Most players had already found the stuff they needed when they got there, and only had to trade for a few things that RNG hadn't delivered to them, leading to an oversupply of items and low prices across the board. That is not to say that it wasn't worth saving the items, as you still typically got better than selling to the traders, but it didn't suddenly make you a Tarkov millionaire by getting there first like it did in previous wipes. Since then, BSG have reduced the flea market level requirement to 15, which I think was a good change after the initial stage of the wipe to give players starting late a small leg up against established players. We do not know what level the flea market will be in 12.12. It could be reverted to 20, could be kept at 15, or it could be moved to even higher, something like 25 or 30. Either way, it seems unlikely that it's going to be getting lower than 15. However, this time there are other reasons to save your items nonetheless. With the addition of daily quests, players will now have three dailies and one weekly, with typically three broad types being extract the location, so having to survive a map X number of times, kill X PMCs, scavs or scav boss, or find and transfer. This final task type requires finding raid items to complete, and keeping a stockpile of these in your scav junk box can allow you to either complete these instantly, or to help with some of the requirements. This will make the junk box even more of a key target in the early wipe than it is already, and continue its importance after flea market access. Also, who knows what changes have been made to the existing tasks? I can imagine a patch where the requirements for some finding raid tasks on the standard quests are randomised between players, e.g. Therapist's first task needs slow laywards for some people, IFAX for others. Until we know whether this is going to happen or not, I'd keep those items if possible. As for the hideout and the Bitcoin farm, the hideout is definitely worth investing in to both make money as well as complete finding raid item tasks, and the Bitcoin farm will most likely still be worth it with the coins at around 350k each, especially if you get your GPUs early. The earlier you get it up and running, the better it will be for you throughout the patch, and this time around, post the coin rebasing, the price of coins has been relatively stable and worked out. Like last time, we can very likely expect starting loadouts to differ between Bear and Usec. Whether this will be any different in 12.12 is hard to know, but previously this only really made a difference at the beginning, evening out fairly quickly. Only when the patch drops will we find out if there are more faction specific differences like rep, locked items or anything like that, so for now you just have to decide if you want more MP5s and M4s to start, or PP19s and AK74s. 
With VoIP, the general bias on Western servers for choosing USEC might get smaller given in-game voice lines are likely to become less important and won't effectively lock those out that don't speak Russian from choosing Bear in the future. So in terms of early game goals, it should come as no surprise that getting to the required level for the flea market will be most players' target. Use a combination of regular quests and daily tasks to accelerate your XP, and for those location tasks remember that the run-through timer is only 7 minutes and not 10 as it used to be. If things stay as they are, getting to Vagman 2 will be very useful to purchase the 6B3TM for 50k, which gives you access to a consistent level 4 armour. Then for item storage, buying the Lucky Scav junk box for 1.1 million rubles from Therapist is important for EOD players, but absolutely critical for those on standard accounts, so that you aren't forced to sell as many items simply to make space in your stash. It sounds like a lot of money if you're new, but it's well worth it. Finally, in terms of weapons and ballistics, unless something dramatically changes with the updates to ballistics, which at close range I doubt, the point at which rounds have over 50% chance to pen various armour classes is 17 pen for level 2 armour, 27 pen for level 3 armour, and 37 pen for level 4 armour. Use the ballistics page to work out if the rounds you want to use are sensible, but this is the one reason why M855 ADARs and 762 PS SKSs work well once players are wearing a little bit of armour, as they deal with up to level 3 at 28 and 32 pen respectively. Last time I went with the NATO Peacekeeper route, which is a fun progression path if you haven't done it before. This focuses on Peacekeeper's quests even before those like Punisher from Prapor, and although it does rely on a little bit of RNG love to get the flash drives for Skier, if you can push through to Peacekeeper 2 and complete the cult part 1, you can buy M856A1 from him directly. When paired with the 556 MDR, which has high ergo and a decent starting recoil of 71 considering its 650 fire rate, at 37 pen it's like a better 545 BT and deals with everything up to class 4 with a budget price tag which is really really good in the early and medium stages of the wipe. Taking this further and getting to Peacekeeper 3, you unlock both the P90 and its best ammo SS190, which is an insane killing machine in the mid tier. Although SS190 also has 37 pen, the 900 RPM and the zero modded recoil of 46 honestly shreds players even with lower tier class 5 on, literally penetration by volume. One of the best things about Peacekeeper is that his level requirements are some of the lowest across the traders, so if you can get to him and finish his quests, you can unlock him much earlier than some of the other traders at the same level. Hopefully this has given you some ideas of what to try next wipe, not everything will be the same, but if you're looking for even more ideas about what you could do, check out my video from early last wipe. Some of it is naturally a little bit old, but I didn't repeat everything from that video here, like the specifics of early trader tasks, efficient storage of items pre junk box, and some level 1 weapons, which still holds true today. If you made it all the way through today's video, drop a comment to let me know how awesome you are. For more content, check out the Scav Talk podcast, and feel free to visit our Discord community of like-minded and friendly Tarkov people. Keep up to date with my streams on Twitter, and with all that said, I'll see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids.